Hello world, welcome to the School of Programming. In this one, I'm going to be giving a brief introduction about functional programming with Python. Let's start with the challenge. Say we have a string containing integers separated by spaces and we want to get to some of all the odd numbers in it. Now let's try to solve it imperatively. First, we'll need to split the string by spaces, which will give us a list of strings, where each string represents one number waiting to be cast into an integer. Now we'll loop through this list to cast the atoms to integers, check if they're odd, where is odd is a function that takes a number and returns true if it's odd, else false, and then add the numeric value to an accumulator. And this is how a function to achieve this task would look like. Of course, this can be written more neatly, but I'm going to talk about these optimizations in some other video. Also, we'll not worry about implementing the helpers like is odd. And this is an imperative solution, where we focus on the how part. We tell the computer how we want something. In this case, we tell it to initialize a value to zero, go through each item in the list, store the cast value into a variable, and if the value in that variable is odd, add it to the total, and finally, return the total. The style where we focus on the what, where we tell the computer what we want, rather than giving it instructions on how we want it, is called declarative programming. Let's bring the list back from the example. With the declarative approach, we can say convert all of these strings to ints by applying the int function on each of the items, call is odd on the items of the transformed list, and keep only those that return true. Then stick an add operation between all of the items to get the sum of all odd numbers. In code, it will look something like this. Let's start by understanding map. In its simplest form, it takes a function as the first argument and an iterable as the second. Let's say that the iterable is a list of these integers. Then map would call the function f on each of the items and return a new iterable of those. It maps the given function to each item. Or in other words, it transforms each item and gives a new iterable of those transformed items. Up next, we have filter. It is similar to map in case of input, as it takes a function as a first argument and an iterable as a second. It also calls the first argument on each item of the second argument, but returns a new iterable containing only those items for which the function call returned a truthy value. It filters out things that don't return true when called with the first argument. Next up, reduce. This also takes a function as a first argument and an iterable as a second, but it requires that the function passed to it take two arguments. Let's say we're passing the simple add function that takes two arguments and returns the addition of the two. And let the second argument be a list containing 1, 2, 3, and 4. The way this call proceeds is that it starts by supplying the first item of the iterable as the first argument to the passed function, and keeps taking the item from the iterable as the second argument. For the next call, the return value of this call, which is 3, will become the first argument, and as said before, the second argument will be taken from the iterable. Now it adds 3 and 3 makes the first argument a 6, and the second argument will be taken from the list, which is 4. As there are no more elements to be consumed, it returns the final result as 10. In usual scenarios, it reduces the given collection to a singular value. A little bit on the anatomy of the function pass or reduce. Its first parameter is called the accumulator. As we saw earlier, the return values of the function calls were being accumulated in the first argument and the second one will be the item fetched from the second argument to reduce. Now let's take a simpler look at reduce. It takes a binary operation and sticks it between all the items of the iterable. In our case, it was add, hence we got the value 10. But that could be any binary operation. Let's apply this to our example. Let's start by supplying this string to numstr. We first split it, then call map on it with int function, which casts all the strings to ints, then we filter the numbers that are not odd by calling filter on it with isOdd function, where it calls it on each of the items and discards the ones that return a false value. And finally, we call a reduce on the list with the add operation yielding us a result. Map, filter, and reduce. All of these functions take a function as one of their parameters. Such type of functions that have a function as one of their parameters are called higher order functions. I'll stop here for this one. Thank you for watching.